we're going to talk about conflict, which we need to understand in order to start to reduce it, to end the conflict. This word means something very different to every single one of you. Most individuals on the spectrum really don't like conflict and really prefer to avoid conflict. I want to say that these examples that I'm going to use today, I'm referring to a neurodiverse couple where the woman is neurotypical and the man is autistic. I'm just doing this for the sake of simplicity. So you guys who are on the spectrum, you're more literal black and white thinkers. There's not a whole lot of gray. There is right and wrong. There are facts, what you know to be true or what not to be true. When conflict arises, it's very difficult because you either know what you know or you don't. What you believe is true or it's not. And your partner sometimes can really drive you bananas with wanting to talk through things when you already know what you think about something. So conflict to you typically means a few different things. Your partner is just flat out wrong about something and it's very perplexing and annoying to you that she doesn't get it. You also feel like you're going to get criticized, that she's going to criticize you for what you know is already right. And that's just plain annoying and frustrating to you. This is what those of you who are autistic tell me when you know conflict is coming. So what your partner says and does feels like a personal attack on you and you get pretty angry with her. Your partner often gets very emotional to the point of yelling and maybe even eventually crying. And she ends up telling you that you've hurt her and you have no idea how or why she's getting hurt about something that is not even about feelings. For example, there are no feelings involved in how to load a dishwasher. This comes up all the time with neurodiverse couples. The dishwasher is a hot topic, how to load the dishwasher, or where the car should be parked, or if the TV is at a satisfactory volume. So when your partner says, I want to talk to you, you want to avoid this whole conflict scene and even the emotional drama for her. So you just shut it down by ignoring her. She said she wants to talk, so we're just not going to go there. Or maybe you hear her out and state your reply, what you know to be true, and just end the conversation, open and shut, no drama. But this is not how she's experiencing conflict. This is not her experience of what is going to happen at all. You, so your experience is very different than hers. Again, she is neurotypical and he's the one on the spectrum for this webinar. So ladies, conflict means a lot of different things to you too. A lot of what you are feeling is I want to discuss our differing opinions and figure out a resolution, a compromise. I want him to realize how he hurt me. I want him to apologize for what he did. I need him to change how he, and you could fill in the blank, whatever it is. I need him to recognize my perspective and opinion. I want him to see how this is a pattern and it has to stop. I feel ignored and dismissed and I need him to listen. You feel shut down and you feel dismissed. You want to talk about what has happened. You want to process it through. You want to discuss it with your guy. Guys, you really do feel criticized and attacked and blamed. Both your experience in this is very legit and very real, but very different, as you can see. The autistic folks, guys, you are not understanding how she wants to process it. The emotions are really something you all want to deal with. So you just want to avoid it. Even for her, you want her to avoid this emotion that it's going to turn into. Ladies, you do want to process it and don't understand that he does not want to. Everybody feels misunderstood and shut down. This is problematic. This is just perpetuated over and over in relationships. I hear it all the time over and over. And it's really worse in spectrum relationships because of the huge opportunity for communication errors. We don't speak the same language. So it's a much bigger problem in our autistic relationships, our neurodiverse relationships. So we need to learn how to fix this. So I want you to think about a recent interaction you had with your partner, some argument you've had or some kind of disagreement you've had, what you brought to that what you each brought to it. Now that starts before the conversation actually takes place. We bring a lot to a conversation about just who we are, our expectations. So when we come to that conversation, what are we expecting from it? What's my goal from that for that conversation? And what is the other person's expectation and goal? 
those may be totally different. We may not realize that my expectation and his expectation or her expectation is really different. And we may be projecting onto our partner or into this conversation what we're expecting to happen. We can misread their reactions and their responses because of what we're bringing to it. We're also bringing our relationship history. So if you've been with somebody for a long time, you've been with them a long time and you've had some conflict. If you've had a history of violence in your relationship, if you've had a history of avoidance, if you have a history of trying to talk things out and it doesn't go well, all that's coming with you to this conversation and it influences what you expect. We know in the psychological community, we know that we see what we expect to see. We hear what we expect to hear. So if in the past we've approached our partner and our partners responded a certain way, we're going to expect the same response. So we're more likely to see that response and hear that response because of what we've seen in the past. That's what we're going to expect. That's what we're more likely to see, even if our partner doesn't respond that way. So when we have an interaction, we take some meaning away from it. Whatever that interaction was, if it was a fight or just a conversation, we each take some kind of meaning away from that interaction. So what did we each perceive happened? What was said? What was the outcome? What was the determination that we made? What was the other person's opinion? What was my opinion? What, what did our partner experience? What was their perspective? What was my perspective? That meaning can be very different for each person. A lot of times when I'm working with couples, they'll have had some fight. And I'll ask each person what happened. I get totally different versions of what happened and what was said and what was agreed upon. We have to learn how to ask each other, what did you mean by that? We have to learn to ask about definitions. How are you defining the words that you're using? We literally use words differently, phrases and expressions. We have to learn how to say, I don't know what you meant by that. If you don't stop and clarify, you're walking away with totally different meanings and you're understanding that conversation differently. This is a breeding ground for more conflicts later because then how you remember it is different because the meaning you took away is different. You think that you agreed that you're going to go on a vacation this summer and he thinks you agreed that you're going to wait and decide at the end of year after you see how much money you have. And you walked away with different meaning. Somehow he thought this and you thought that. And memory is not reliable because we know in the field of psychology that new conversations interfere with memory. So every time you talk about this vacation conversation, I'm just using this as an example. Every time you talk about it or every time you think about it or every time you tell a friend about it, your memory changes a little bit. What do you do with all of this information now. It's tough when you're in a relationship with someone who doesn't recognize that you're both probably remembering it incorrectly. The key to all of this is to stop and investigate. And so many couples get stuck in who's remembering it correctly. And that's not really what's important. I encourage folks to just stop and recognize what's happening and say, okay, my brain's working different than yours. And just recognize it. It's important to not try to fight it. So to summarize, conflict begins before we even interact. We bring our expectations of what we want, what we need, what we're afraid of, what we're expecting, what we're expecting from our partner. We bring all of that with us to an interaction. If we don't listen to hear what our partner is saying first before we go to prove our own point, then we're not really having a conversation or an interaction. It's like an invisible wall that's between two people, between you and your partner, that prevents either one of you from conveying what you want to say or being heard. Conflict is most often not about someone being right and someone being wrong. It's about two people who aren't hearing each other or are not willing to hear each other, who are not willing to say, okay, I know what I think. I know what I feel. But what do you think? What do you feel? I may not agree with you and I may not understand it, but I want to hear it. I'm willing to listen and I want to hear it. So the next time you get into a situation with your partner and conflict arises or you're fearful of conflict, stop and think first about what you're bringing to it, what your own expectations are, what your fears are, what your beliefs are. Are you actually willing to listen to your partner and what they have to say? Are you open to recognizing that their perspective is valid, even if it's different from yours? It doesn't mean you have to agree with it. So stop and check in with yourself. Everybody is very aware of what their partner is doing that causes and contributes to conflict. 
But a lot of people are not aware of their own contributions to conflict. That is how you truly can reduce conflict. And when you stop and you check in with yourself, because you can only make an impact on what you do and what you say.